Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Love Love Tuts, and today we're going to show you how you can add attributes to your custom elements and have those attributes get pushed into the elements and allow you to do all sorts of cool stuff. So we can use those elements then within our JavaScript or our CSS or even just the HTML within our custom element. So check it out. We're going to get going on that now. Okay, so in the last video, we set our color to be red for this H1 and an override. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. And we're actually going to still override it, but just make it something a little bit more pleasant. This uh, 333 is a nice little gray here. And I'm going to get rid of the standard header that we put in here for our previous example. Now, let's go ahead and be able to pass a custom attribute into this element that we can then use inside of our hello world. So for a basic example in hello world.html, I want this to say hello world if we don't pass it anything. However, if I want to pass it a name, I want it to say that person's name. So let's say we were to pass it uh, the name attribute and name were to equal Scott, it would say hello Scott. And that's the, the premise of this hello world custom element. So let's get started by doing that. The first thing we need to do is we need to let Polymer know that we're going to be having an attribute. So we can say attributes, and that's a uh, uh, plural here, so attributes, and then it's going to equal, and this is going to be the name of the attribute. We're going to give our attribute the name of simply name. If we had multiples, uh, you'd have a space and then your second attribute, perhaps it could be uh, last name or something. So this is how we have our initial attributes set up. And now we can actually use these attributes inside of our document here. Uh, so I'm going to get rid of hello world and I'm going to do two double curly brackets here. And inside of here, I'm going to write the name of our attribute, which is simply name. So as you can see here, it's going to say polymer element, hello world attributes name. It's going to pull in the name attribute and then insert it into name. If we were to check out our page right now, we'd simply just get hello because we're not passing anything. So let's go ahead and pass in a name here into our hello world. Now to do that, you can simply add in an attribute like you would maybe a data attribute or any sort of HTML that you'd be used to. So we can say name equals, and then what name I'm going to pass it. In this case, I'm passing it Scott. So hello, uh, Scott is what it should say. Now you can see that upon refresh, it says, hello, Scott. Now, if we were to change this, add some Z's in here, Scott's. So pretty much whatever you put in here is going to get output. But in the instance that we don't have this name attribute, it sort of fails. It just says, hello. We want it to be able to say, hello world on default. So how can we do that? Well, what we want to do is add a script into our element. So to do that, we actually want to get rid of this no script uh, in the hello world.html. Let's get rid of this no script uh, because now we're going to be having a script. And inside of our Polymer element uh, tag here, but outside of our template tag, we're going to have a script. Now we're going to use this Polymer function here, and it's just capital Polymer, so Polymer like that. Then we're going to have parentheses and then brackets. And for this, we're going to pass in the properties as a JavaScript object. So we're going to say name is the key and the value is going to be world. And since this is the only item in this is object, we don't have to have a comma or anything like that. We're simply saying that this name attribute is world by default. Okay, now let's refresh our page here. And as you can see, we're back to hello world. We don't have anything passed in there. And now if we do add something, name, we could say hello Ben, save this, refresh, Hello, Ben. So you'll notice that it's completely overriding and it's just setting it as a default. Um, but this is a great way to be able to add some sort of customization into your elements. Consider this, you have, uh, as we said before, 
a Google Maps element that grabs the Google Maps API and whatever. Well, in that instance, you would have an attribute such as longitude or latitude, and you could paste that in there or type it in every single time you want a map. You could say the longitude is this, the latitude is this, and then the Polymer element will be able to actually take those attributes from your element tag and then do something with them and output a Google map with that longitude and latitude. So although this example is extremely basic, we're just outputting the text, it has uh, large implications for what you can do with Polymer. So you now have the ability to modify your elements and they're not just going to be the same every single time you output them. Now we're just getting started with Polymer. There's a lot more great things you can do with Polymer and we're gonna get into all of that. Uh, we're gonna be writing some really cool JavaScript. We're gonna be doing some data binding and stuff like that. Uh, basically, you're gonna be able to make some really great custom elements and get sharing those elements. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tuts. We love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.